Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I'm IETF qualified auditor doing audit for the automotive sector for the last 18 years. I'm again back with a very, very interesting topic that is with respect to the problem solving technique. Step number three, which is talking about root cause analysis using Ishikawa diagram, which is sometimes also called Fishbone diagram. Well, in case when we talk about problems, if you see in general in day to day life, we are surrounded by so many problems. Maybe we are missing the flight or maybe we are getting late with some assignment and there can be many more things. Now, there are certain things for which we can easily find some solution. There are certain things which are a little bit difficult for which we may need to do some fiber analysis. But there are certain things for which we don't want any failures. because. Maybe at one time the failure may be coming because of one particular reason, but then we are not looking to the reason. Say for example, maybe there is a failure in the bulb, that bulb is not working in a car, in the headlamp. Now, we did analyze and we found what the root cause is with respect to the wiring harness. But there can be many other ways in which something can go wrong. Are we looking into that? So in fishbone diagram, the most important thing is that whenever we are analyzing the root cause, we are not analyzing on one particular specific thing, but on variety of subtitles things. And we make sure that we not only take care of one cause, but multiple causes in one go. To talk a little bit about the history about fishbone diagram. So it was started somewhere in 1960s by Karu Ishikawa from Japan, who initially used in the shipbuilding and then later on it came into practice by different kind of industries and now it is globally very very popular everywhere if i talk a little bit more about uh, fishbone diagram so primarily it's a problem solving technique wherein in a systematic manner we are trying to identify the causal factors and it can be a small problem or big problem it takes care of everything and it's not only for the technical problem but also in case there is any behavioral related issue we can also use it there now to talk another thing that where we can use a fishbone diagram. So first of all, one important thing is that we can use the fishbone diagram to identify all the possible causes of an issue whenever we want that. And secondly, when the team or the cross-functional team is thinking that they're not able to find any root cause at that time, they can use that. When we talk about Ishikawa diagram or the fishbone diagram and also called as cause and effect diagram, there are certain steps that we need to follow. And once we follow those steps, it becomes very easy to understand that. So the first step is to first of all, identify and define the effect. It means we need to identify the problem that we are talking about. Then the second thing is about choosing the categories. When I say categories, there are different categories. In majority of the cases, there are eight categories, which includes man, machine, material, method, environment, management, measurement, money. Now, there could be a possibility that in some cases, more than four or five categories are applicable. In certain cases, maybe six or seven are applicable. So while analyzing it, we need to identify that which are the categories which are there. And then the next time comes, that is about brainstorming. When we say brainstorming, it's primarily a cross-functional team approach where people from different areas, different processes, they need to sit together and they need to identify what can be the possible reason. They need to ask why and then why and then why. And then they need to update that particular diagram and they need to fulfill that. One very interesting thing in uh, filling up the uh, Fishbone diagram is that, first of all, you will identify the main cause that we call as a primary cause. But then, we also go a little bit deeper and we try to understand that what can be the reason of that primary cause. So that another cause, which is the cause of that primary cause that becomes the secondary cause. Say for example, we say that something has broken. Now the primary cause is it has slipped out of the hand. Now the secondary reason could be it has slipped out of the hand because the, the hands were oily. You know, so we are going to the secondary cause and then we can move further also wherever we want. One very interesting thing with respect to the Fishbone diagram is that there are many advantages and many disadvantages also with respect to it. To talk about the advantages first, the first one is that it's a very highly visual brainstorming tool which we can use to identify all the possible causes. Secondly, we, we can very quickly identify multiple root causes rather than identifying only one cause of a problem. We can identify with respect to men, machine, material method, what could be the possible causes by which the problem can happen. Thirdly, we can see all the possible causes simultaneously at one go. 
and the fourth and the most important thing is it's a very good visual tool which gives a very good clarity to all the stakeholders to understand that what exactly is uh, the fishbone diagram what are the possible failures and then other things also there to talk about some disadvantages the first thing is that sometimes it becomes a bit complex whenever we are making a fishbone diagram to identify because there is a lot of cluttering there and sometimes the interrelationship between the causes like primary cause, secondary cause, sometimes it becomes a little bit confusing and then it creates a problem to us. Well, let's take one example of a fishbone diagram and let's take a very simple and easy example of a day-to-day -day life and this example is related to say high employee turnover, that the turnover of employees is very high, people are living very fast. Now, we identified that there can be four possible causes which can be related to environment, skill and knowledge, motivation and incentive. Now what can be the possible causes for that? So let's start first with the environment. So for environment let's assume that we identified two possible causes. It's very chaotic environment and it's too loud. It's difficult for people to work there. To talk about incentives, maybe the current incentive scheme is not working maybe because of the COVID impact or maybe because of anything else. Now another cause could be with respect to the skill and knowledge. So with respect to that particular category could be the person is not able to understand with respect to the changing work environment or maybe the person is uh, willing not willing to change with time and resisting the change and some possible causes maybe with respect to the motivation maybe the new procedures are not well defined so it's not uh, gelling with the people there or maybe there is lack of available training that could be the reason that why this particular thing is happening. Now it's here it's important to understand that it's not possible that all the causes are actually relevant for that particular thing. So organization need to identify and review each and everything and then identify that which are the actual causes which may be actually causing it. Now let's take another example with respect to the industry and assume that let's take a generic example that the product quality is not meeting the quality standards. And we put it on the right hand side and then we identify what could the possible categories. The categories were related to workers, machines, maybe some other related problem, miscellaneous problem and the raw material. So when we talk about workers, so it can be first of all the lack of training and experience. Secondly, it can be with respect to the poor health or maybe overworked. And thirdly, it can also be related to the improper behavior at work. When we talk about machine. It can be with respect to wear and low maintenance of the machine or maybe inefficient use of the operational capacity and thirdly it can also be the result because of the improper handling of the machinery and tools. Something similar if we go to the next category with respect to the raw material, maybe the quality of raw material is not good or maybe the wastage is too high or maybe there is delay in the delivery process that could be the reason that we are not being able to produce the right time and the right quality. And if you look into the miscellaneous problem or the other problems, it can be with respect to the no process improvement, maybe the technological issue or maybe the process or the work environment is not congenial for people to work there. Now these all are the possible cases. Now based on these possible cases, the organization have to go deep down to identify that which are the actual cases with respect to the quality because there may be many factors which actually will be serving the purpose. And then all those things in those four categories which are actually not meeting the target, organization need to identify the reason for that. One very interesting thing which has been seen in general industry is that whenever we are talking about fishbone diagram, so we call it fish because it looks like a fish, that's why we call it a fishbone diagram. But then when we talk about fish, it should really look like a fish when we are actually doing a cause and effect analysis. But many times it happens that maybe we are biased or we are in too much hurry. Or we just want to use a particular tool like a fishbone diagram to demonstrate that yes, we are using a tool. So we don't look into all the possible aspect and the fish has some bone somewhere but in other places nothing is there. So it's very important to look into it and make sure that whatever fishbone diagram we are making, it should be complete and we should identify all the possible thing and then based on that we need to identify the possible thing. To talk about some of the industry challenges with respect to using this root cause analysis with respect to root cause. The first and the foremost is how often is there that we actually don't need any fishbone diagram but we are aware about the root causes but we still make this diagram just to show or to present to the customer and to other authorities that yes we are using some tool. The second most important thing is that how often people actually have confidence in all these tools like Ishikawa diagram that yes by using it will actually drill down to the real root cause and then we will take action with respect to that. 
and thirdly we may be using ishikawa diagram or the cause and effect diagram but how often we actually work on that and find out the real reason and take action on that rather than just superficially find some symptoms and taking action on that so if i do a summary i talk in brief about what is the ishikawa diagram some brief history about it where it can be used what are the different steps in which we need to use it and then i also shared some advantages and disadvantages of this particular diagram and then finally i also talked about how we can use it with some two examples while well, in next video will again be with respect to the root cause analysis and this time i'm going to talk about pdca plan do check act and see that how many organizations are using it as a problem solving tool with respect to the root cause analysis well regularly i'm getting a lot of feedback from your side and they're helping me to understand your expectation so please do continue that and in case you want to understand about this video a little bit more in detail if you see the link below you if you click that you'll find a blog there and there you will find this particular information much more detailed and in case you're liking these kind of videos and blogs you can always share with your friends and colleagues and you can always subscribe to my youtube channel and my website bhavyamangla.com thank you